And there was a wedding once where I had two hard drives from that wedding go bad. And let me tell you, I, and this was before I published it, absolutely sick. Like those two days, just terrible. Number six of our things that you need in starting your professional photography business is going to be a marketing plan. And I would love for us to do an entire episode on this. I think so many of these we could do an entire episode on. And that's just because you may be at a point where you're trying to get clients just as you can get them. You might be at a point where you know, everybody in in your neighbor uh, is wanting to hire you for photography services, but it's so important to keep your income consistent. If you're, especially if you're going to try to go full time, Mm -hmm. um, and a marketing plan is going to help you do that so that you don't have those months where you can't keep your head above water or the months where you can't pay your bills. Um, we, a marketing plan is going to help you better round out your calendar and then just know that you're going to have the income coming in that you need. The way that I like to do that, I'm going to try to say a a condensed version and we'll do a better episode later is I like to take a look at a glance at a 12 month calendar and I will go through and I will say, okay, this is what I want to photograph in that month. For me, it's not weddings, it's portraits. And so this is how many sessions I plan on doing that month. This is the type of sessions that I can fit in because sometimes I can fit in more daytime sessions than I can evening. So I know exactly what types of photo shoots I want to do that month. How am I going to market that? Is it going to be through styled shoot ahead of time? Is it, do I need to network? Do I need to collaborate with anybody? Like, Mm -hmm. how am I going to market that? And then I'll count back and at least 60 days before that, I'm going to start doing that actual marketing. And, and I'll do that for the entire year. I have certain things that I'll start marketing for. And then that way, today happens to be the first of the month whenever we're recording and I can look and I can say, okay, It is April 1st when we're recording this and June 1st, you know, this is what I need to be marketing for. I'm sorry, in June, these are the sessions that I want to be doing. So I need to be marketing for those right now. Um, Can go into so much more detail, but just some sort of marketing plan so that you're not flying by the seat of your pants. Mm -hmm. I love it. That's so good. And part of that marketing plan, and this is going to be number seven is you need a website. And we were first chatting about this. I thought that seems kind of obvious, but I want to stress how important it is not only to have a website, but a professional website Mm -hmm. to have a domain that's yours. Um, Nothing like, you know, Mm WhitneyCarlson.Wix.com. It doesn't even cost that much to get a real domain. That's Mm -hmm. yours. It's definitely worth the expense. And let's say you're on Instagram and you've been getting a lot. I know some people will do all their marketing through Instagram and that's how they get a lot of their clients or sometimes even all of their clients. And that's great. And there's nothing wrong with that. However, if something were to happen to Instagram and you, they were to close down, you have lost everything. Mm -hmm. So you've lost your marketing and that's part of that marketing plan. It needs to be several different ways that you can find clients. So along with that website, you need a newsletter because even more important than the website is those emails of people that are wanting to follow you. Mm -hmm. And then when it comes to email, this is a lot into this one thing, but you also need to make sure your email address is not a Gmail account. Now you can have one that you can maybe use, um, you know, if you need to use it with a client you already have, but if somebody is a new client and they're writing into you and you respond with a Gmail address, it is not going to look nearly as professional as if I'm responding from Whitney at Whitney Carlson.com. Mm-hmm. And I just realized that is not my domain. 
there is another <laughs> Whitney Carlson. You're just saying it. Yeah. And she's like a fitness, or at least from years ago, she's a fitness influencer <laughs> and all this. That is not me. That's funny. <laughs> that was really funny. I'm not a fitness influencer and never will be. But mm-hmm. um, yeah, just make sure that you have you have that. It's just that little bit of professionalism that's going to help you stand out. And they're not going to say, hey, this is a new person here because they don't even have right. a professional a website or a professional email address. Yeah. And I feel like there's becoming, um, I feel like so many people that I know used to be on social media are not on social media as much these days. I think it's like our generation is like, man, I'm getting a little tired. Um, not tired of social (laughs) media, but you know, I mean like needing a little bit of a step back from some of it. And if you're only marketing on social media, you're not reaching all of the people that may be in your target market. And so, yeah, I think a website's so important. Yes, mm-hmm. exactly. Um, real quick side note, uh, Amanda, there's another Amanda Waltman. And speaking of people that you know of somebody else, because I was trying to for social media, get Amanda Waltman. It was already taken. She uh-huh. is a like cowgirl. Like she has like rodeo stuff. <laughs> Awesome. And she's from That's Eastern fun. Washington, which I was like, oh my gosh, we're like actually in the same state. Yeah. Um, but anyways, so yeah, quick little note about, I tried to get for social media, Amanda Waltman, and I couldn't because it was also mm-hmm. taken by another Amanda Waltman. That's so fun. Um, yeah. And yeah, right. I know. So now time for my next one, which is number eight, <laughs> which is not nearly as exciting as, you know, like roping cattle, but um, business insurance, <laughs> business insurance. Um, uh, yeah. You like that site way? Anyway, Anyways, um, <laughs> so business insurance, another one that's not fun. Like, again, this is not a fun thing to go and pay money for something that, you know, you may never really end up using. But at the same time, if you were photographing weddings, a lot of venues require you to have yes. insurance. Mm-hmm. I don't shoot weddings, but I do photograph at different um venues. And even just if you're doing a portrait session at certain venues, a lot of venues require you to have proof of insurance. That way, if something happens, they're not liable. It's all on you. Um, I, when I, this is just my, this is my two cents for everybody that's starting out. Um, I am a big fan of PPA, Professional Photographers of America. Mm -hmm. They have a lot of really amazing resources. And one of those is business insurance. When I was looking at my options for getting business insurance, I called the insurance company that I use for my, uh, at the time, my condo Mm -hmm. and my car. And it was really expensive, like Mm -hmm. ridiculously expensive. And I was looking to see if there's any other options. And I was already a PPA member and it turned out that I could get insurance through them. And since then, I think it was two years ago, maybe, maybe it was a year ago. They now have a specific membership that is your membership plus business insurance. And I don't remember the cost of it off the top of my head, but it was like hundreds of dollars cheaper than it was to go through my own personal insurance company. So I very strongly recommend it checking their website, checking that cost, definitely do price comparisons because I feel like that's really important. But the other thing to keep in mind is that the business insurance you're looking for, you need to make sure it covers what you have. Mm -hmm. And a lot of venues require, I think it's, is it 1 million or 2 million? There's like, again, it's all venue specific, but a lot of them require like 1 million liability. Um, Some are two for some of the fancier places that I've photographed as well. So you need to make sure that the plan that you have will cover what it, where it is you're going to be photographing. And again, PPA is an awesome resource. That's another one I want to do a a whole episode Mm -hmm. on. And I'd love to get somebody from PPA to come talk to us because I feel like that is, that's all they do. They just work with photographers and they really want to make sure that you have resources to get Mm -hmm. you what you need to be a successful Mm -hmm. photographer. So there you go. Business insurance. And listener, if you're curious, when we say business insurance, it's, it's insurance that's liability insurance so that your clients can't sue you. Um, Mm -hmm. you know, if they twist an ankle on when they're twirling on your photo shoot or something, and then also insurance on your gear in case you fall down the stairs at a wedding, like Whitney. (laughs) (laughs) Yeah. (laughs) I've had to use insurance on my gear before just from, I thought my bag was zipped when I tossed it over my shoulder and it wasn't and a lens fell out. So it happens. You think it's not going to happen. And it does. does. So 
Um, I don't know of many photographers who had, who have had to use their liability. I don't know of any. Do you, do you guys know of any photographers who have had to use liability? Not personally, but I know it has happened. I know about, yeah, I know. Well, you don't want to be the one. Exactly. Yeah. And that's the thing. It's right. like, yeah. I definitely have heard those stories from people that have needed yeah. to, um, and yeah. Um, but yeah, yeah. like yeah. the people I'm thinking of did have PPA and they were able to help them out. So, yeah. well, and that leads us to number nine, which is contracts just mm-hmm. to cover yourself. Um, I'm going to be very candid. We keep things real on here. And, um, when I was starting out, I, the way that I got my contracts and the way that everyone that I knew got their contracts is if you had had a photo shoot with another photographer before and they had a contract, you just basically copied. You just said, well, this, if this was good enough for me to sign it mm-hmm. as a client, it's good enough for my clients to yeah. sign it. And then sometimes I would Google contracts and I would be like, that looks good. And I would copy it and paste it into <laughs> mine. Yep. <laughs> and Listener, the whole point of this podcast is to help launch you in a better direction than, than what we started. Yeah, than what we did. <laughs> yep. There are so do what many we did. more resources today yeah. than there were back whenever we started. There, PPA has great contracts. There's the law talk, and we're actually going to have Rachel Brenke. Um, we're interviewing her soon. And so we'll have that up on the the list of shows coming out for you soon. Um, some of your CRMs have contracts that are built in and you can use theirs. Uh, there are so many websites. If you Google photography contracts, I do want to say if you have access to a local attorney who yeah. could review it, that's very important. Just because your CRM has a contract available to you doesn't mean that it'll actually cover you in your state. Um, you, it's better than not having one. Um, and the way that I started was better than not having one, but the best way to do it is to draft one up with someone local to you that can make sure that you're covered and that you can just speak to back and forth. Um, Mm -hmm. and, and they can make sure that you're all covered. So, but contracts, You should not be taking money from anybody and doing a job for them without having a contract in place. And I would even venture to say, even if you're doing it for free, almost even more so if you're doing it for free, it's going to cover your client in what you agree to do for them. It's going to cover you for what you're agreeing to do for your client and all of the things, just to make sure that everybody's on the same page and everybody's protected and everybody gets what they need. Yeah. Number nine. When, is yeah. yeah. When I started, I didn't have contracts. So there you go. It was not mm-hmm. good. Yep. It, and I definitely had, uh, I had some bad, mm-hmm. bad things happen. I had a client that never paid me and we didn't have a contract and that was on me and yep. there was nothing I could do about it. And yeah, uh, it was real bad. So yeah, get a contract. <laughs> you definitely want that. Absolutely. You want to get paid. You want it. Yep. Yes. Definitely yep. necessary. And even and- just for them to, you know, to know exactly what they're getting in return for their money and having a paper trail and just, there's so many benefits to it all. Yeah. Because miscommunication can happen even if there's nothing like nefarious going on or no, someone's not trip, you know, trying to rip you off like that. Sometimes it's just people don't understand. And so having that contract spell everything out is so important. Okay. We had to take a break because Aaron's power went out randomly on a beautiful day, <laughs> randomly. And so we're ready to jump back in with our last of our number 10 and then our bonus tip from Aaron. So we were talking about contracts and um, we've been talking about all these legal things that you need, but one of the biggest things that you can do to help make sure you don't get into really big trouble is to have backup storage for your files. Mm -hmm. And when I was uh, doing weddings, I was always told you have to, you have to have it in two places. You have to have it in two places. And there was a wedding once where I had two hard drives from that wedding go bad. And let me tell you, 
I, and this was before I published it, absolutely sick. Like those two days, just terrible. I was able to get, like there was, I don't even remember what happened, but I was able to get the files immediately got a backup of those. Everything was fine. The client never knew nothing went wrong. But after that, I was like three places. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. (laughs) Yeah. Um, And even if you're storing stuff online, so you could have cloud storage, you can pay for that. Um, You can have your hard drives. Um, And even when I had just two hard drives, I would store them in two different places. Um, But again, I still... You can have them in two different places, but if they both go bad, they're both yeah. gone. Mm-hmm. So even if you have stuff online, something could happen to the company that's hosting your files. So you absolutely need to do that. And at weddings, I think it's different now because all the cameras, most of the cameras now you can shoot on two cards. Yeah. If you can do that, shoot on two cards. Before before that would happen, when I would shoot a wedding, we would always stay at the wedding and back up every file before we went home. Mm-hmm. And that was really, really important to me. It helped me sleep good at night. <laughs> I'm like, okay, two copies yeah. right away. Um, so if you're not shooting on two cards, if you have a camera that doesn't let you um, back up to a card, and again, that's just JPEG, I think. I believe it's usually... JPEG on the cameras. Do y'all know like your camera? Does it do two copies of raw? I shoot. Well, you can decide. Um, and so if you wanted to save space, you could, but I shoot raw on both cards on both cards. Mm -hmm. Okay. So however it is, you do it. You need to have three backups. That's me telling you Mm -hmm. not just two, three. Mm -hmm. And if one of them is on, on the cloud, that would be great. Yeah, I'm really you hear my horror story, by the way. Yeah, always. Stop that. <laughs> um, I, it was the Olympics up in Vancouver. I was like, I got tickets to go to a couple events. Awesome. I was like, I got to work too. I'll bring my hard drive with my stuff on my laptop and I'll do it. Uh, I had a bit, it was a big extended family shoot that I photographed. And um, while I was taking all my stuff into the little Airbnb we were staying at, I dropped my hard drive. And not even far. I dropped it like maybe a foot and a half. Uh, Everything Mm. was just gone. It wouldn't connect to anything. There was nothing. Mm -hmm. I was up there for the whole week doing Olympic stuff. There was nothing I could do. Talk about pit in your stomach for that entire time. Mm -hmm. I came back. I had to go to... um, Well, I ended up going to like Geek Squad (laughs) and was like... How do I do this? Um, yeah. they, tr- they tried. They couldn't do anything on their end. They had to ship it to some sterile environment in the Midwest. And it cost me $3,000 to get everything back, which was way, <laughs> way more than, um, than I had charged a client. So I lost big time on that one. I only were all their photos late. I then had to pay to get their photos back. And it was a whole process. It was terrible. I, so wonder anyway, if so yeah, type, <laughs> I wonder if there's a type of insurance that would help you pay for that. It, like if your business insurance would help you with file recovery. Um, that's they, so I know PPA does have an option for that. Um, I don't know if they did back when I right. was doing it, or maybe I right. didn't know that they did, but yeah. uh, I do know that they have something now. Right. Um, but yeah, no, it was bad. So yeah, back them up. Yeah. <laughs> well, here, Whitney did a great job of mentioning that you could do cloud storage. You can do an extra hard drive. Um, I, the really the least expensive way to have an extra copy, that third or fourth copy that you're going to have is to just not format your camera card until after you've delivered the files to yeah. your client. Yeah. Because... SD cards, CF cards, if you're still shooting with those, they're so inexpensive these days that you can have multiples. Um, And so that's probably the least expensive backup option that I can think of is just not deleting them off of the card until your client has them. And then I always suggest to my client that they back them up in two places as well. 
And that just gives you a little bit of extra insurance. Mm -hmm. But yeah, backup storage for sure. I use Backblaze. I'm going to put a link to that. Oh, you do too? Yeah. Yeah. I've used them so much. Yeah. Yeah. I've used them for recovery. I have used them when I was in the middle of working on something and my, my like, just whole hard drive failed yeah. as I was working. And yeah. so luckily everything was all backed up. And what I love about Backblaze is it just does all of the backing up for you. You don't have to prompt it. It's just mm-hmm. continuously backing everything up as you're working. Mm-hmm. And so I only lost like a little bit of an Excel file that I had like yeah. literally just been working on. Yeah. But that was it. And so I, yeah, I, I love them. I cannot praise them enough mm-hmm. for making it so easy to access what you need when you need your backups. So yeah. And- I will say if I'm, and I think I'm remembering this correctly, I was plugging in my hard drive to be backed up by Backblaze. That was one of the ones that like, when I did that is when it corrupted. So it didn't even have a chance. Oh, didn't have a chance to get it. Yeah. Oh, that sucks. (laughs) But everyone's happy. The client never knew. Yep. That I yep. knew. Yeah. Yep. Right. <laughs> I will never forget. Yeah. And my client knew I had to confess to my client, which is so awful. Like, oh my yeah. gosh, I felt so unprofessional. It was terrible. Yeah. yeah. Here's how you're professional. And I want to say this, like we're just telling you these things that we have done wrong and, and that we have messed up. You will most likely mess up. Mm-hmm. What makes you professional is how you handle that. And so Amanda... What you did, you aren't like, I'm not paying that three thousand dollars too bad. You yeah. you spent the money mm-hmm. to make that client happy. Yeah. And that is what that client is gonna see. Cause if you mess up and if you're honest and you do everything you can to fix that problem, that's what they're gonna remember. Because it doesn't matter you have the three of us, any of the professionals you see anywhere, every single one of us has made a mistake. Sure. And many mistakes. <laughs> yeah. We don't always talk about it, but it has happened. And what keeps and what will keep you in business is how you handle those mistakes. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Well, so, listener, we yeah. have given you 10 things that you should have in place when you're going, when you're starting your photography business. And really, that's that's probably enough for you right now. <laughs> that's a lot. <laughs> um, And we're going to be so proud of you when you start checking through this list. Here's a number 11, a bonus for you that's not really um, as important as the top 10, but I I do want you to consider having it on your list. And that is a Google My Business profile. Um, So that's if someone local to you is searching for a photographer, you want to show up. And your best chance of doing that is making sure that Google knows who you are and where you are and that they've verified who you are and where you are. So that way they'll they'll show you in uh, the search for local areas. And there's a whole process of getting verified that you will go through, including showing a video of you where, you know, your your street address and your storefront or your home office, if you don't have a storefront, you know, just wherever it is that you work, just showing them where you are. So um, to find that, you literally just Google, Google my business and it will walk (laughs) you through the steps. It's so simple, but we just want to make sure that you're being seen for all this hard work that you're doing and that clients can find you. So that is your bonus number 11. Love. Yes. Thank you. That's so great. And If you've heard these 10 things and you're like, this is a lot, I need more details. Um, We were very excited when we made this list because there's so much more we can go into. So Mm -hmm. stay tuned for upcoming episodes. If you're on app, if you're on YouTube and watching us there, make sure you've subscribed to our channel. Make sure you sign up for a newsletter so you can know when these episodes will come out. Um, We have our interview with Rachel coming up. From the Law Talk, we have so much more in store and planned for you, and we can't wait to share it all with you. So it was great to see you, Erin Amanda. It was good getting to chat and share with all of you listeners. Thank you for being here, and we will talk to you soon. 
see you next time. Bye. Bye. Okay, Photo BFFs, if you have not subscribed, do that right now so you never miss a new episode. You can also find us at theeditweekly.com where we have free resources and downloads for you to help grow your photo business.